Now that Starship has made its much-anticipated flight test, you might be wondering, when are they going to fly again? Based on the damage that we've seen to the orbital launch pad, it may be quite a while. The first problem Super Heavy is going to have getting back into the air is that the orbital launch pad took quite a beating in this flight. In several of the SpaceX camera views, you can see debris flying and even hitting the ocean, which is a good distance away. So you can see it really kicked up a lot of concrete from the base of the orbital launch pad. And there is some excellent imagery from RGV aerial photography, which shows that there are enormous chunks of the concrete around the launch pad that are completely missing now. And even some of the support pilings from the pad are severely damaged, although because these are aerial photographs, it's difficult to tell the extent of this damage and well only spacex will really know how bad it is now elon musk has said on twitter that he thinks it will only take one to two months to repair the orbital launch pad but there are a whole lot of other people who think that's unlikely myself included now once again this depends on how severe damage to the pad is as SpaceX is able to get teams out there to investigate just how badly the launch pad is torn up and if the support pilings are in better shape than we think then it may not be too difficult the, in that case the big problem is going to be the 10 or 20 foot deep hole that Super Heavy dug into the ground beneath the pad and of course even if the damage to the pilings isn't bad right now, any more orbital flights, given the current concrete pad setup, could just keep wearing them down and eventually destroy the supports for the launch pad. But, once again, according to this tweet from Elon Musk himself, there is a plan to avoid that. That is putting a water-cooled stainless steel flame deflector beneath the launch pad and it's quite difficult to tell if this will work or not because it's so difficult modeling the exhaust flow and how that heat will transfer to the plate and the water cooling however that's going to work and we really don't know the entire details of how it's going to be set up but presumably if SpaceX has designed this and is planning on using it they've also simulated it and think it'll work. If they're able to get that plate to work well, then that could really start to help with this pad damage and making sure it doesn't happen again because nearly all the damage to the launch site was caused by concrete debris and if they're able to just stop the debris from being generated in the first place, then there's that problem solved. Now, the next issue SpaceX is going to run into with making their next test flight is going to be the FAA. Now, a lot of longtime Starship watchers just felt a little shiver run down their spines after we waited for so long to get that FAA launch license in to fly Starship. We saw a lot of debris getting kicked up by the Starship launch and you can actually see in a couple live streams, dust started raining down in South Padre Island, five or six miles away from the launch site. And if that's going to happen with every single orbital launch, the FAA might have some concerns about that because that could cause some mild injuries from the abrasion of the sand and dust hitting people it's not great for your property either to be getting a miniature sandstorm every however many days, weeks, or months between every Starship launch. But let's say that the FAA decides that the upgrades to the orbital launch pad are going to be enough to prevent 
future issues with debris getting launched places where it shouldn't be. Let's say that they just say, all right, you're good to launch. Next question is, how long will it take to get Starship 26 and Booster 9 ready? Now, Starship 26, it seems, already has its full batch of engines installed. And as for Booster 9, I'm not quite sure what its current status is as for engine count, but it has already been taken to the launch site and undergone some cryogenic testing. And the same goes for Starship 26. To be fair, Booster 7 made its first cryogenic test in April of 2022. So it took a whole nother year before it was able to fly. Now, some of that time is just because of SpaceX waiting for the launch license. But also, they were continuing testing for a lot of that year. And they only made the 33 engine static fire attempt in February of 2023. It's obviously very difficult to get the world's most powerful rocket ready to fly, and we'll have to see how long it takes them to prepare Booster 9. Of course, after the testing process of Booster 7, they've learned a lot and will be able to get Booster 9 ready faster than before. But how long is still up for debate, and I would place my bets that it'll at least be another three or four months before they could have a chance of getting it ready to fly. But when it comes to what's really going to stop them from being ready to launch again anytime soon, their biggest issue is either going to be the FAA or orbital launch pad condition. Both of these are huge issues which could stop them from flying for months or even a year or more. We'll have to wait and see what happens as time passes and more information becomes available.